The Enigma PTSD Working Group is designed to identify neuroimaging uh, markers that can distinguish people that have PTSD from controls and also identify um, nuanced aspects of uh, PTSD. Uh, in the brain. The total number of participants varies from project to project. We recently implemented a data freeze for the hippocampal subfields project. We have a total of 34 sites with approximately 3,400 participants. PTSD is a very interesting condition that we have been studying for a long time but still don't understand. Uh, initially, I think a lot of studies looked at uh, PTSD as completely a disorder of emotional dysregulation. And there's also a significant component of learning and memory involved in the condition. Um, and that's partly why examining the hippocampal subfields is so relevant because um, it's the core center for learning and memory. And when I say learning and memory, I mean specifically fear learning and memory and um, you know, fear extinction and those types of processes. The hippocampus as a structure is actually very heterogeneous because it consists of these unique subdivisions, the hippocampal subfields, that consist of unique cellular and functional properties. So they don't all do the same thing. And there are a lot of studies showing um, the, the various different functional properties of the dentate gyrus versus um, CA1 and CA3, um, how they're involved in pattern separation versus pattern completion. In particular for PTSD, because these different functional characteristics of the subfields are directly translated into core symptoms of PTSD. So for the dentate gyrus, that is a um, key structure for pattern separation. And that is also having an abnormality in that region and not being able to separate patterns and identify um, con contextual relevance is what leads to fear generalization, which is a huge problem and which, which is one of the hallmarks of uh, PTSD symptomatology. Well, neuroimaging is our main tool, is our window into the brain. So for us to understand the underlying neural substrate of PTSD and what is happening, um, how can we trace behavioral symptoms to neuroanatomy that requires neuroimaging to be able to capture those types of abnormalities. Part of the impetus for doing this project is that there is actually a lot of inconsistencies in previous methods that have been used to segment the hippocampus. There's actually a recent paper that came out that showed that there have been over 21 different manual segmentation methods that have been used. Um, and so you can't really identify, or you can't make any direct comparisons across studies because different subfields are parcelated, different subfields are joined into a single structure. So you have really no idea how to draw any conclusions um, from those studies. And then for automated segmentation algorithms, like those um, processed through uh, FreeSurfer, um, with each version, there, there's a different protocol, and so the majority of studies have been using FreeSurfer version 5.3 for their hippocampal subfield segmentations, and a lot of work has come out showing that um, that specific protocol was really not intended um, for, for what it evolved into it to be, being used for. Um, it, was, it didn't map on very closely to neuroanatomy, and so um, to correct this issue, they came up with the FreeSurfer 6 um, hippocampal subfield segmentation protocol, which is much better at uh, delineating each of the subfields because it was based off of a seven Tesla atlas. And it actually is uh, much more compatible with uh, both the three Tesla platforms, uh, even 1.5T, which is a very small uh, minority of scans in the working group, but it still um, allows us to get a very good picture of the, the subfields um, across these different scanner platforms. I think because we have this harmonized segmentation protocol for the hippocampal subfields, that harmonization is actually fairly straightforward because everyone just runs the exact same protocol. The challenge is actually figuring out how to integrate all of the different clinical aspects of each study because they're all different. So each of them had different inclusion and exclusion criteria to recruit their participants. Um, and a lot of times these are factors that have 
very strong relevance for um, hippocampal integrity and subfield integrity. Um, so those are all factors that have to be considered. And then um, not everyone collects the same assessments, and when they do, they're different. The biggest challenge is, I think, is how do we make use of all of this data um, while still being true to the literature and maintaining um, a clinically relevant standpoint. We have run several preliminary analyses and we've presented those findings at international conferences. We're actually at the paper writing phase right now. The main goal is, is to identify a uh, common hippocampal subfield marker using um, identical image processing in all of these different sites across the world. Um, and since we have none of the data for you, so it would be 34 sites worldwide. The, more nuanced and potentially more interesting question is how does um, PTSD and trauma exposure specifically um, influence hippocampal subfield volumes. And so one of the more unique analyses that we plan to do is actually compare people that have current PTSD to people that have uh, had lifetime PTSD but no current diagnosis. Um, and then also compare those groups to people who are trauma exposed but never had a PTSD diagnosis and then the unexposed control. And one of the uh, main advantages of Enigma is that it, we have enough power to actually make those four comparisons, which has not been possible in any type of impactful way previously, or really any way, because it requires such a large data set to be able to look at each of those different groups and how it is reflected in um, hippocampal microstructure.